Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his essay, What Libertarianism Is, John Hospers clarifies for us the relationship for libertarians between the individual and government, and then business is something sort of in between, and he's going to clarify how it is that business and government would also relate to each other. There's also some implications if we read between the lines for the relationships between a business, if it gets large enough, if it gets powerful enough, if it acts enough like a government and an individual. But he doesn't clarify that as such, so we'll, we'll read that in there. Hospers begins by telling us the standard libertarian position that the best government is one that is small and that stays within, if we want to use a contemporary term, stays within its lane. What is the purpose of a government? He says that the proper role of a government is to protect the rights of the citizens, protect citizens against aggression by other individuals. Notice that he says citizens, so he's not saying the role of the government is to protect everybody in the, in the world. No, it's just to protect those who belong within its, its borders, right? Um, or, you know, its members uh, outside of its borders in, in some other place against violations of their rights. And the rights for the libertarians that matter are life, liberty, and property. So he says the function of government is to take a, a responsibility off of our shoulders. What's the responsibility? Well, it would be rather inefficient for us to try to protect all of our rights on our own. As he says, if each of us had to defend himself against possible aggressors, we'd have to spend a lot of our time in target practice, karate exercises, other means of self-discipline and uh, de defenses. And we might even be helpless against groups of individuals. So that would rule out, you know, the improvements in science, medicine, arts likely, uh, you know, and, and civilized life, right? So it's, it's very efficient to have a government to do that protection. And he says, the function of government is to take this responsibility on. The government undertakes to defend us against aggressors and to punish them if they attack. That's the basic level that he wants to see. So, you, you know, you could have minimal taxes in order to pay for those protective services. But the government from the libertarian position shouldn't be involved in all sorts of other things like, say, health care or, you know, inspecting factories or anything like that. Um, ideally, from, you know, depending on how far you go along the libertarian spectrum, maybe the government shouldn't even really spend that much time on, on roads or, you know, like taking care of snow plowing or things like that. Um, the other thing that he tells us, another main point, it's summed up in this statement that he has, government is the most dangerous institution known to man. And why does he say that? Well, again, from the libertarian perspective, government has a bad track record of transgressing people's rights. And he gives us sort of a laundry list of the things that government, uh, now he's, he's kind of, you know, talking about government per se, not any individual government, which could say, well, I, we don't do that. But he's saying government in the past has um, killed people, enslaved them, sent them to forced labor and concentration camps, regularly robbed and pillaged them of the fruits of their expended labor. Um, and, and government is also dangerous in part because it's so powerful. As he points out, Government can surround and encompass a person totally, dominating every aspect of one's life so that one has no recourse from it but to leave the country. And in some countries, totalitarian countries, even that's not permitted. So government has is, is got a bad track record um, and government is too strong. 
to, you know, if, if it's not kept in check, it's going to be abusive. So he talks then, another main point, about what kind of laws a government should be in the business of enacting. And this is, again, very typical libertarian doctrine. One type of law protects individuals against themselves. And he gives as uh, prime examples of that um, laws against various types of fornication, that is sexual morality, right? And um, alcohol, drugs. We might think about other ordinances that have been passed against, say, dancing or being tattooed or anything like that. Anything where somebody can say, that's not good for you, so we're not going to let you do it, right? And libertarians are totally against that sort of law. Why? Because it interferes with the right, perhaps not just to liberty, which is paramount here, but could interfere with, with somebody's property as well. So that's a, a prime consideration. Um, what else? Um, the second kind of law protects individuals against aggression by others. And he says that libertarians are entirely for this. Um, aggression by individuals against other individuals should be ruined out. The, the, the laws who function as to protect human beings against encroachment by this, um, that's perfectly legitimate. The third kind of law is where we see some sort of transfer of wealth or resources or perhaps even time. We're requiring people to help each other. And Hosper says libertarians are against that. And you might say, well, why would they be against that? What's wrong with helping somebody else? There's nothing wrong with helping somebody else. As a matter of fact, libertarians may choose voluntarily to help other people, but they want to be able to choose without coercion, without the government telling them that they have to contribute for that. So he says, no one should be forced by law to help others, not even to tell them the time of day if requested, and certainly not to give them a portion of their weekly paycheck. Um, he goes on and he talks about uh, rights, and he says, many people uh, you know, claim virtually everything that one needs or desires as one's right. So you may say you have a right to a job, the right to free medical care, the right to free food and clothing, to a decent home, and so on. And then the question is, well, whose expense does this come at? If it's coming at anybody's expense who didn't voluntarily contribute that, like say in a charity, then uh, from the libertarian perspective, it's illegitimate. But this is what government spends a lot of its time and resources doing. Um, so he says, if you have a right to a job, who has to supply it? Does an employer supply it even if he doesn't want to hire you? What if you're unemployable or incurably lazy? If you say the government must supply it, does that mean that a job must be created which no employer needs done and you must be kept in it regardless of how much or little you work? <clears throat> if an employer is forced to supply it, as it, as it, as it at his expense, even if he doesn't need you, isn't he being enslaved? Isn't aggression being carried out against him? And he does a similar examination of medical care, uh, of other things as well. And this leads him to a fourth point having to do with the relationship between um, libertarianism, individuals, and government, but it's mediated through businesses. He wants to see less government control, ideally no government control over most parts of the economy, a totally free market. And the idea behind that, is, he says, that um, with the restrictions removed, the economy would flourish as never before with controls taken off business. Existing enterprises would expand and new ones would spring into existence, satisfying more and more consumer needs. Millions more people would be gainfully employed instead of subsisting on welfare and all kinds of research and production. Released from the stranglehold of government would proliferate. Fulfilling man's needs and desires as never before. It's always been the case whenever government per permitted people to be free traders on a free market. Um, history doesn't actually bear that out, of course, especially recent history where we see that. But Hospers is writing a a in an earlier time. And there are still many people who view the solution to all of our problems in a libertarian way, namely get the government out of it and allow the free market to decide. And this brings us to another interesting point that's not discussed here, but is well worth considering. 
is it only government that can do the sorts of things against individuals that libertarians have a problem with? Or do businesses sometimes do those sorts of things as well, particularly the larger they are and the more of a stranglehold they have on certain sectors of the economy? Are all people who engage in the workplace, merely voluntary agents not being coerced in any way by the, uh, the, the corporations or companies who they're working with, or are some of them uh, forced into things which violate their rights from a libertarian perspective? I leave that question open for you, whether businesses could also engage in some of the same things. Policies, for example, you know, protecting individuals against themselves having a drug policy at work, right? If, if you know, it's telling you that you can't use recreational drugs in your free time, maybe that's acting like a government from a, a, a libertarian perspective. So I leave that for you to think about in light of Hosper's article.